Good morning, Birmingham Unitarian Church. I know you didn't really want to come inside this morning, right? I could have stayed outside myself. I kind of thought about creating worship outside. Maybe we'll do it someday. I am Betty Mullen, worship associate for today's service. Whether you are joining us here in the sanctuary, remotely via Zoom, or watching this recording later, it is good to connect with each and every one of you. As a multi-platform church, it is important for us to build a bridge between online and in-person participants. First, we will project the image of folks who are currently on Zoom, in their jammies, sitting on their deck, <laughs> on our screen, and ask them to turn their cameras on too so we can see the beautiful sunshine, the flowers on your patio, the toast in your plate. <laughs> Give us a wave. Now we invite you who are gathered in person to turn to face the camera in the back of our sanctuary and give the folks there a wave. Good morning. If you are visiting us for the first time, welcome. If you are with us in this sanctuary, we invite you to join us after service for coffee and conversation in Hoda's Hall which is located to the left as you exit the sanctuary. If you are on Zoom, we invite you to stay along for a call and a virtual coffee hour immediately after the service ends. Whenever and however we connect with BUC, we are building this beloved community. The campus of Birmingham Unitarian occupies this ancestral, traditional, and contemporary lands of the Anishabi. These fires confederacy of Ojibwe, Ottawa, and Potawatomi peoples. Bloomfield Hills is situated on land ceded in the 1807 Treaty of Detroit. We acknowledge Michigan's 12 recognized native nations as well as historic indigenous communities in Michigan. We also acknowledge indigenous individuals and communities who live here now and those who are, were forcibly removed from their homelands. In offering this land acknowledgement, we affirm indigenous sovereignty, history, and experiences. As we light the chalice flame, these words by Carl Seberg between the dawn and dusk of our being, let us be brave and loving. In our little passage through the light, let us sustain and forward the human venture in gentleness, in service, and in thought. We'll join in singing this morning hymn number 1023. So there will not be slides with words projected. If you would like to open up your teal singing the journey, you're welcome to. It's 1023, Building Bridges. And we'll do this as a round. So the choir will be in two parts. And Myra will lead part one. And I will lead part two. So like we normally do in rounds, we like to sing it all down one time and then twice through as a round. But feel free to add whatever harmony or whatever part you wish to add to make it your own. Will you please rise in body or spirit? Sing 1023 Building Bridges. Building Bridges.
Good morning, I'm Reverend Connie Grant, minister of this congregation. These words are by Kathleen Rollins. In the meantime is between times, between the always been and the here and now, between the what is and the not yet, between the tentative hello and the tender goodbye. We are living in the meantime. We gather together this day to give ourselves over to time made holy by our attention, our presence, and our prayers. We gather together in the meantime, in the in-between time, from wherever we have been to wherever we will go. May we attend well to the attentions of this hour. Hello everyone, my name is Shannon Snydman, Director of Religious Education, and today's story is called In Between Things by Priscilla Tay. An in-between is a thing in the middle. The cat is between the table that's green and the chair with the tear sitting right over there. The dog is between the floor and the cat and does not enjoy being in the middle of that. The chair is between the parrot and the carpet. The carpet is between the floor and the chair. What will you find between the floor and the carpet? <sighs> Yuck. A fur ball, a dust ball, and a nasty clump of hair. But it doesn't stop there. Between the floor and the ground below lies a world of in-between things to show. Pick any two things to look in between. Look left and look right. There's much to be seen. An in-between thing can separate two things, which is sometimes a helpful and necessary thing. The glass in between keeps fish wet and us dry. It separates the cat from that tasty looking guy. If you build a fort and fill it with light, it will separate you from the monsters at night. If you travel outside and then back in once more, an in-between thing you'll need is a door. Doors take you through walls, separating kitchens from halls, and you will find that pie filled with scrumptious meatballs. Uh, in-between things can transport you somewhere, take you places from here to over there. You can walk down the in-between coal-colored street that's in between this house and the house that has feet. If you meet an in-between stream or a creek, cross an in-between bridge for dry paws and dry feet. Some spaces between places can stretch very far. Don't walk all those paces, take a train or a car. Take a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and an in-between thing is the mix that you'll get. Take a little bit of yellow and a little bit of blue and the in-between color is a new greenish hue. A little bit of skirt and a little bit of short and the in-between outfit you get is a skirt. <laughs> a little bit of spoon and a little bit of fork and the in-between tool you'll get is a mm -hmm. If you dance a little jiggy and you add a little wiggle, an in-between jiggle will make everyone giggle. For an in-between thing, no matter how absurd, there's always some sort of form of an in-between word. Between oink and meow, you might hear oink yow. Between cow and zebra, you'd have a zebra. If you brought up a thing between, or if you thought up a thing between a giraffe and a poodle, you could create a poofy and spotted geroodle. Not quite this and not quite that. In between things aren't clear yet. The sky is dim, neither dark nor light. Is it sunrise or sunset? Is it daybreak or still night? Are you out in the cold or too close to hot? Or are you warm in that in-between spot? Look around for in-between things to scribble, trying to make yourself the thing in the middle. 
Keep looking, eyes open, and in between things will come clear. All kinds of wacky and weird will appear. Search high, or search and explore every nook and cranny. Search around the world in your head and, in, and between the two covers of this book. In between, <laughs> sorry, in between the two covers of this in between book. <laughs> Here we are. All right, so uh, at this time, we'll have all of our children and youth join us at the back of the sanctuary as we head off to class. The mission of Birmingham Unitarian Church is to be a free and welcoming religious community that encourages lives of integrity, learning, service, and joy. One way we carry out this mission is by giving half of our weekly offering to a nonprofit organization that shares our values and addresses needs in this community. The recipient of our plate sharing through the end of September is one of our cherished longtime projects, support of Walt Whitman Elementary School in Pontiac. Since 1998, we have fostered learning for kindergarten through fifth grade students by stocking our and operating a mobile library in the school we also do some tutoring and conduct other programs that help students learn and feel supported by their community. Your offering will be used to buy books for the library, supplies for our programs, and occasional necessities for students. This morning's offering will now be given and received in a spirit of generosity and gratitude. Our ushers, please come. With gratitude, we dedicate this offering to the good works of our congregation and dedicate ourselves to its service.
We hold each other in our hearts and minds with all our joys and all our sorrows. This morning, Carol Hayford expresses her thanks for the, out, the reaching out that was done by many members of the congregation on her husband's recent death. We remember those experiencing losses and those facing health challenges. We pray in whatever way we pray for all those affected by war, by hatred and violence, we pray for peace. Even when the cares of the world weigh on us, may we find joy in our connections with each other and in the pleasures that life holds. Let us care for one another and for ourselves in all the ways we can. As we hold each other in our hearts and minds with all our joys and all our sorrows, whether spoken or unspoken, let's take a moment to be quiet together. This meditation is by Kate Walker. In between liminal, that space where we wait, between moments, events, results, action, no action, to stand on the threshold waiting for something to end and something new to arrive, a pause in the rumble of time. Awareness claims us alert, a shadow of something different. In between invitation and acceptance, in between symptom and diagnosis, in between send and receipt of inquiry and question, in between love given and love received. Liminality, a letting go, entering into confusion, ambiguity, and disorientation. A ritual begun, pause, look back at what once was, look forward into what becomes. Identity sheds a layer, reaches into something uncomfortable to wear. In between lighting of the match and the kindling of oil, in between choosing of text and the reading of words, in between voices and notes carried through the air into ears to hear, in between creation thrusts ever forward. Social hierarchies may disassemble and structures may fall Communities may revolt or tempt trust. Tradition may falter or creativity crash forward. Leaders may step down or take charge. The people may choose or refuse. In between storm predicted, the horizon beacons. In between, theology of process reminds us to step back. In between, where minutia and galaxies intermingled with microbes and mysteries. In between, liminal, that space where we wait. Look, listen, feel, breathe. Let's sing, return again. It's number 1011 in your singing the journey, if you're interested in following along, we'll continue. 
This morning's reading comes from Bannon Perry, and it's called The Parable of the Trapeze. Be aware that he is speaking to you. Sometimes I feel that my life is a series of trapeze swings. I'm either hanging on to a trapeze bar swinging along or for a few moments in my life, I might be hurtling across space in between trapeze bars. Most of the time, I spend my life hanging on for dear life to the trapeze bar of the moment. It carries me along at a certain steady rate of swing, and I have the feeling that I'm in control of my life. But every once in a while, as I'm merrily, or maybe not so merrily, swinging along, I look out ahead of me in the distance, and what do I see? I see another trapeze bar swinging toward me. It's empty, and I know in that place that I know that this new trapeze bar has my name on it. It is my next step, my growth, my aliveness coming to get me. In my heart of carts, I know that for me to grow, I must release my grip on the, this present well-known bar and move to the new one. Each time it happens to me, no, I hope, I pray, that I won't have to let go of my old bar completely before I grab the new one. But in that knowing place, I know that I must totally release my grasp on my old bar, and for some moment in time, I must hurtle across space before I can grab on to the new bar. Each time, I am filled with terror it doesn't matter that in all my previous hurdles across the void of unknowing, I have always made it. I am each time afraid that I will miss, that I will be crushed on unseen rocks in the bottomless chasm between bars. I do it anyway. Perhaps this is the essence of what the mystics call the faith experience. No guarantees, no net, no insurance policy, but you do it anyway because somehow to keep onto that old bar is no longer on the list of alternatives. So for an eternity that can last a microsecond or a thousand lifetimes, I soar across the dark void of the past is gone, the future is not yet there. It's called transition. I have come to believe that this transition is the only place that real change occurs. Sure, the old trapeze bar was real, and the new one coming towards me 
I hope that's real too. But the void in between? Is that just a scary, confusing, disorienting nowhere that must be gotten through as fast and as unconsciously as possible? What a wasted opportunity that would be. I have a sneaking suspicion that the transition zone is the only real thing and the bars are illusions we dream up to avoid the void where the real change, the real growth occurs for us. Whether or not my hunch is true, it remains that the transition zones in our lives are incredibly rich places. They should be honored, even savored. Yes, with all the pain and fear and feelings of being out of control, that can, but not necessarily, accompany transitions. They are still the most alive, most growth-filled, passionate, expansive moments in our lives. So transformation of fear may have nothing to do with making fear go away, but rather with giving ourselves permission to hang out in the transition between trapezes. Transforming our need to grab that new bar, any bar, is allowing ourselves to dwell in the only place where change really happens. It can be terrifying. It can also be enlightening in the true sense of the word. Hurtling through the void, we just may learn to fly. With the Unitarian Universalist value of social justice as a priority, the choir asks you a question today. While you are in between, there are right decisions, wrong decisions, and no decision.
Between is a place where something happens. Between is not just about space. It's about what happens in that space. Not just about time, but about what happens during that time. The realm of between is the place where, according to religious and social philosopher Martin Buber, people meet in authentic relationship. Buber tells a story from the Hasidic tradition. When a man is singing and cannot lift his voice, and another who can lift his voice comes and sings with him, the first will be able to lift his voice too. Buber concludes that is the secret of the bond between spirits. The story of the two singers is part of a collection of proverbs and aphorisms that Buber selected because they revolve around a single question. How can we fulfill the meaning of our existence on earth? The Hasidim, or the authors of these sayings, were, in Buber's words, devout people who knew that no one can be really devout in relation to God if one is not devout towards God's creation, and that the love of God is unreal unless it is crowned with love for one's fellow human beings. When people join together in respectful relationship, something happens between them. In relationship, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. As Martin Buber says, that is the secret of the bond between spirits. Buber writes on the far side of the subjective, on the side of the objective, on the narrow ridge where I and thou meet. There is the realm of between. In Buber's words, the concept of between is to be acquired by no longer localizing the relation between human beings as is customary, either within individual souls or in a general world which embraces and determines them but in actual fact, between them. Buber proposes the reality of between as a way to bring about the genuine person again and to establish genuine community through authentic relationship that focuses neither on the individual in isolation nor on society as an abstraction. The realm of between might be termed the realm of what I call relational individuality. The realm of between is the place where individuals enter into relation with their whole beings to join together in fulfillment. In Buber's words, in its human manifestation, spirit is not in the I, but between I and thou. This kind of divinity is not out there somewhere. That's right. Not out there somewhere not transcendent, but imminent, right here between people. When people recognize each other as authentic human beings in authentic relationship, creativity happens. The relationship itself is created, and the participants in the relationship are changed. Between is a realm of synergy where joint work is more productive than working alone, where people can do more and be more than they could do and be by themselves. John Lennon and Paul McCartney have been described as a single creative being, each very different from the other, both collaborating and competing, working as a team even when they were working separately in a creative call and response, where each one's work and way of being in the world was made possible by the others. Between is a place where conversation happens, where people speak their truths and deeply listen to each other. Authentic conversation can be challenging, as University of Chicago theologian David Tracy suggests. He said, conversation is a game with some hard rules. Say only what you mean. Say it accurately as you can. Listen to and respect what the other says, however different or other. Be willing to argue if necessary, to confront if demanded, to endure necessary conflict, to 
change your mind if the evidence suggests it. I don't think Tracy is suggesting that we challenge each other for sport, but that the game of conversation is interactive, mutual, and requires certain rules of engagement. Respectful behavior is necessary. This includes speaking up as well as listening. Authentic conversation can be challenging, should be challenging to ourselves and each other. Unitarian Universalist minister Alice Blair Wesley writes about the integ integrity of the free church and about the spirit of persuasion, which she describes as both free and freeing. Each member is called to give utterance, to ask, say, explain, defend what is the truth they see. To be unforthcoming is to be disloyal. For how can we learn from one another without candor? Each member is also called to yield the floor with humble courtesy, to listen, be open to, and to try again and again to imagine what others see. She continues, the spirit of persuasion is the spirit of a free religious people. It is holy to us. It holds all together insofar as we live by it, in the embrace of the free church, in the generous embrace of people who are centered in ever-changing and responsively creative ways around a promise of fidelity, together to search for and dare to live by truth. Conversation is a spiritual practice that engages our hearts and minds as we search for and dare to live by truth. Between is a place where people are teachers and learners willing to be persuaded, willing to learn from each other. What can we learn from people who are different from us? Margaret Wheatley, who writes about how living systems organize, adapt, and change, asks, what if we were to be together and listen to each other's comments with a willingness to expose rather than confirm our own beliefs and opinions? What if we were to willingly listen to one another with the awareness that we each see the world in unique ways and with the expectation that I could learn something new if I listened for the differences rather than the similarities? What might we see? What might we learn? What might we create together if we become this kind of listener, one who enjoys the differences and welcomes in disturbance? And Wheatley suggests that every time we listen well, we move toward each other. The poet Rilke wrote about the relationship of marriage. Even between the closest people, infinite distances exist. And he suggested that loving the expanse between them gives them the possibility of always seeing each other as a whole and before an immense sky. Rilke reminds us that even as we are bound in relationship, there is an expanse between us that allows us to see each other and to be transformed by each other. In authentic relationship, people move toward each other, yet retain their own individuality in the dance of life. Unitarian Universalist Paul LaRue suggests a dance that circles and tests and learns as it gradually moves closer to that place where you can turn and embrace without breaking or losing any part of yourselves, but only to learn more of who you each are to find that you are each whole and individual and separate, yet in the same instant, one. Maybe it's that dance where you put your whole self in. <laughs> Betweenness is about time and space, relationship and transformation. Between can be the place between one thing and the next, the moment when the past is gone, the future is not yet here. 
the moment when you've let go of where you were and it's not quite time to be where you are going. We're living now in a between time, not just this time of transitional ministry that this congregation is living in, but an even more fundamental time of transition in all our lives. We're living in a liminal time on the doorstep between one way of living and the new way that is ahead. Can this time be a time of reflection and renewal in our lives? A time of getting ready for whatever may come? Can this time be not just a void between one thing and the next, but a time of transformation? The poet John O'Donohue in his poem, For the Interim Time, describes a place where the path you took to get here has washed out. The way forward is still concealed from you. This is a time of continuing uncertainty in this world we live in. We may be struggling even to find solid ground with the path behind us washed out and the path ahead still concealed, as O'Donohue puts it. O'Donohue suggests that the more faithfully you can endure here, the more refined your heart will become. Our task is not just to endure this between time, but to endure faithfully. It's a time not to simply retreat from the world, but to be on retreat with our own selves and with those who share our lives. It's a time to be intentional about what we are doing with our time, what we are doing with our lives. It's a time to endure faithfully, to live faithfully to our values as we discern and refine those values. It's a time to cultivate authentic relationships with others. It might even be a time to forge new connections or to renew old ones. It's a time to take care of ourselves and each other. This includes reaching out to each other, getting outside of ourselves, and giving something of ourselves to others who need what we can give. This enduring faithfully means noticing what's going on inside us and around us, aware not only of the pain and sadness, but aware of the joy and beauty in our lives. This enduring faithfully, this living faithfully, means being open to transformation, open to getting ready for the new reality that lies ahead in our lives and in our world. I invite you now to rise in body or in spirit and join in singing hymn 318, We Would Be One.
as we extinguish the chalice flame, these words by Robin Gray. May we know ourselves bound in community, even while we are apart. May a passion for justice burn in our lives. May we carry the light of compassion in our hearts and in our every interaction. May we be whole in our devotion to truth and always carry the lamp of peace before us. And may we live our lives fully and creatively so that we may be a blessing to ourselves, to each other, and to all those whose lives we touch. Go in peace.